Over the past 11 years, I have endured more cuts and bulks than one would ever care to admit. Some years containing 6 power cuts and 11 speed bulks, but it is what it is. Anyway, we tend to build habits in these phases, habits that we carry on long term and habits that we are happy to see the back of. In this video, I'm going to talk about 6 daily habits I do today, 11 years on, to ensure I am building muscle and making gains, bro. So sit back and enjoy. The first thing I do every single day still to this date is weigh myself. I feel like I would be correct in saying that when you are in a deficit, AKA trying to get in shape, weighing yourself is at the top of the priority list. When you go into a growing phase, AKA when you build muscle, that priority slowly tapers off to the point where you probably don't even weigh yourself anymore. And it is an effort to keep up with because progress is slower in a growing phase. However, the weighing scales is almost the dictator of where that week or month should go in terms of calorie intake. Um, it's almost like if you build a habit to weigh yourself, you're never missing out. You know what I'm saying? Like your weight could have been stalled for the past week. You could have adjusted calories, but you just didn't weigh yourself because it was off the priority list. It wasn't a habit. Um, it is something that you can play safe. It's not something that you need to do for the entire duration every single day of a growing phase. But again, fear of missing out. It takes 10 seconds to step on the scales and that 10 seconds could, could save your week, okay? Um, everybody's different. Everybody's calorie adjustments are gonna be quicker, slower than others. But it's something that just standing on a scales, you're never gonna miss out in an adjustment that could have kept progression going at the same rate that week slash month slash year. If you haven't weighed yourself in a year, you're doing something wrong, okay? Step on the scales. Second on the to-do list is I make sure I'm hitting enough protein. Now you will have calories set on a bulk. However, during these periods, we do tend to let our hair down a little bit. We go to social events, we go on nights out, we go on a date. We go to the cinema to watch a movie and get popcorn with 800 grams of melted butter all over, okay? You may still be hitting your calorie goal. However, protein could fall short. Now, there's one rule I live by, and that is I do not sleep at night unless the protein target is hit. That may just be me eating an extra three, four, 500 calories over my target to make sure the protein box is ticked. This shit is the building blocks of muscle if I put the graft in that day train my ass off in the gym. You best believe I'm taking the extra calories and adding some extra fat to tick off the protein box that day. I've just built the habit of doing so. And again, it's as simple as eating an extra three or 400 calories when you get home worth of protein. Because I cannot do myself the injustice of writing off that whole day for not adding a half a gram of fat, okay? Eat your protein. I feel like people are not gonna take me as serious as I wanna be taken right now. Number three is staying hydrated. I do still have a water target, okay? I don't know how you've convinced yourself. Water intake and staying hydrated is so productive for your fat loss phase and not just as productive for your muscle gaining phase, okay? It's probably more productive in the muscle gaining phase. A hydrated physique, you're gonna have better workouts, better sleep, better recovery. Your Johnson tip is gonna work better. If you take creatine, it's gonna be more effective. Um, it does tend to drop off when we are in a growing phase. Again, you could be drinking other liquids, some containing alcohol. If you're Irish, you could be drinking Guinness. Um, that's not water, okay? <laughs> Drink your water, have a water target, hit it every day. I promise you, you will see better results in all areas, sleep, performance in the gym, recovery, and yet again, tip action. Wait, we have a sponsor of today's video, Legend London. Now folks, I have been working with Legend London for almost, or I think over two years. Legend London is not only a place of comfort for us lifters to shop online, but they do have some of the sickest gear for people who do train. More jeans, chinos, slacks than you can imagine to choose from. They have sick hoodies, Sick t-shirts for casual wear, t-shirts for nights out, tons of collections, different types of jackets. Make sure if you are picking anything up off Legend London, you use code Glenn and the link in the description. Back to the video. 
Number four, train with intensity. I feel like at this point in my lifting career, whatever you want to call this, I've built up a standard for my sessions. And if I don't at least maintain that level of intensity, that workout was almost a write off to me. It may not be in the grand scheme of things and long term, but just for me, that's a box that I know I can't tick every day. And I'll need a great reason not to tick, which I cannot find, so I have to get it done. But um, I, I don't know why, I just feel like this is controversial, talking about training intensity, which feels weird. Um, some people train hard, others think they train hard but don't, and others know they train hard and they do, okay? Um, if you, a lot of it is motivational based, okay? If you haven't got the motivation to train that day, it's gonna be hard to top a day where you were motivated as fuck. There could be things you could do, it could be training with someone who you know trains hard as fuck and they just push you and then for the weeks leading on after that, you'll notice your training intensity being upped because you wanna mentally match that session. Whether you have someone there to push you or not, you will still try your best. And then it could be just finding a new song, a new playlist, I know that shit works. Um, but regardless, have a standard for your sessions and make sure it's the intensity is there and at least maintain it, okay? If, if some days you're gonna have more motivation to train, you're gonna push it them days which will then account for the days where you haven't and you can just match the level of intensity. But that's a box I tick. If I have two arms, two legs, and I'm in good health, you best believe I'm, I'm, I'm gonna train hard that day. Number five, prioritize sleep. Now this is a rule that I live by and I'm in the position in life where I can make my own schedule and I do prioritize sleep as much as possible. Now some people can, some people work crazy hours. I may not be able to get as much sleep as they want. For me, it's eight hours. Not always can I hit it, and not always could you hit it, but definitely, if you can, okay, move sleep up on the priority list and try. I promise you, life just starts being more sunshine and rainbows, man. You're gonna work better, you're gonna be more creative, you're gonna have better sessions, you're gonna recover better. The list is endless. Again, I'm like a different person when I don't get enough sleep. I'm groggy, I'm snappy. I know his digestion is a bit messed up, obviously, my training sessions will take a hit. My recovery will take a hit. Uh, if you can maybe on rest days, sleep an extra hour or two because you're not getting that hour or two in the gym, whether that be go to bed early or wake up a bit later, whatever your schedule can assist, definitely do so. Definitely prioritize sleep. Number six, enjoy this shit. This sounds cliche as fuck, but if you are not enjoying the process, the process is probably the most overlooked but the most valuable portion of any success in life. It's the process. If you're not enjoying it, pinpoint why you're not enjoying it. Is it a session you don't enjoy? Is it movements you don't enjoy in the gym? Is it any other area of the day that you can tweak to enjoy the process, okay? Um, I know every single day I'm having fun doing this, which is why I can adhere to it. Adherence is, is probably the most important thing to getting a result, adhering to the process. So if the process isn't enjoyable, you're gonna see a drop off somewhere. And again, it does sound cliche, I know, um, but it is important. I think it's the most important. If you're not having fun in what you're doing in life, you will see a drop off, or you won't be performing to the standard you need to perform to get the results, okay? So make sure every day you're having fun, make sure you're enjoying your sessions, like spice some shit up man, set some mini goals, set some goals throughout your day around the crib, silly shit man, just to tick the boxes. I promise you enjoying whatever it is you are doing or chasing in life will take you a whole lot further than just knowing you need to get it done and drag an ass. Appreciate you all watching the video, make sure you drop it a like and I'll catch you all in the next one.